Hey everybody, uh, time for another quick video here. Uh, this video is going to show you how to use uh, Beaver Builder's short code to uh, come up with what is basically columns within columns, or uh, other way to say it, a row within a row. Uh, right now, uh, in the current version of the Beaver Builder plugin, 1.7.8 as of this video, there's no uh, direct way to do it uh, other than uh, what I'm going to show you right now. So with that in mind, uh, let's go ahead and we'll show you how you can do it quite easily uh, with the uh, Beaver Builder shortcode, which was introduced in version 1.7, I believe. So this is a basic WordPress install, what you see here now on uh, local hosts running on XAMPP. Uh, I've doctored a few things up. This is my kind of standard uh, WordPress install that I use for most of my videos, or will be from now on. And uh, you can see it's video number 27, this one. So anyways, Let's get started and uh, we'll go to the back end. And just to show you what we've got here, all we've got right now is the Beaver Builder Pro plugin, 1.7.8. And you do need one of the commercial versions of Beaver Builder for this uh, so that you have the ability to use the short codes and the templates. And one thing that I haven't set up yet, but I wanted to save that to show you how to do it. Uh, is to have the templates available in the menu bar on the left. So go down to settings and page builder, click on the templates menu, and click enable templates in admin, and save that. And now you'll see here we have templates menu. That's for Beaver Builder templates. Okay. So we're going to go uh, to our home page and uh, launch page builder. And no thanks, we don't need the tutorial right now. So this is basically what we have, not much. And uh, what I'm going to do here right now is just delete what I have. Yes, I do. And I'm going to drop a two column row there. And in the one column, on the left, I'm going to put a photo. And I'm going to get the photo from my media library, which I've uh, already uploaded a couple. And I'm going to put here as a genuine sniffle valve. And I'm going to align it to the left. And save that. And that's about it for that one. And over here, I'm going to drag a heading and let's put a simple valve that's right for my heading. That looks good. So far, so good. Uh, we're going to put a text editor underneath there. This is some stuff Oops. about sniffle valves. And save that. So far, so good. There's nothing really spectacular here. But what if I want underneath here two columns with, say, Two other photos. Hmm, how am I going to do that? Can't really do that quite easily right now. You could try to put it in there with one photo uh, that has both images that you want, but that's really not the right way to do it. Or if you wanted, say, two columns of text or two callouts, well, let's use a couple callouts for that. And what we're going to do then now is do it this way. 
We're going to get another row. Okay, we're going to have two columns, and we're going to put this one right here underneath the existing two row one. And we're going to go over to the advanced modules and uh, put a call out. And uh, we're just going to call it call out one. And just put in this is call, oops, call out one. Okay. And let's put an image in there. Uh, let's do Snipplebell. Or should we use Nikon? Now ah, let's use Nikon. That's normally what you'd use. Uh, ah, there's a good one. Let's use that one. So here's call out one. And instead of making that same process again, I just duplicated that one. Drag it over here. Click the wrench to edit. Call it call out two. And change this to call out two. Oops, TEO. Hey, I worked on an F28 called TEO. Um, and uh, what do we want? Image icon. We want to replace that one. Oh, I'll go to the robot or whatever he is and save that. So these are our two callouts. So we want to put these underneath here. Well, how are we going to do that? Can't just drag it there, it'll well, watch. Won't let us because it's a row, right? Okay, so that's fine. Let's just save this while we're here. And we're just going to go over to the front and see what it looks like. Okay, so here's our two column row, the top one with the image, a header, and a text module. And there are two columns. Now we want to put these under here. And I'm not going to worry about margins and paddings and uh, percentages, maybe percentages for column widths. Uh, but you'll get the idea. This is more of how to do it, and you can play around with tweaking uh, the layout afterwards. So let's go back to the back. Uh, launch page builder again. And on the row, for our callouts, we're going to click on the settings and we're going to click here save as and we're going to call this two callouts and I'm going to make it a global just so that if we want to use this anywhere else we only have to change it once and it will propagate those changes to any place you use this particular row template so we'll save that And it's saved. And you can see now it's orange, which indicates it's a global row. And we're going to say done and publish changes. But let's go back in here to the page builder. Now that it's saved and published, uh, we're going to delete that because we don't want it there. Yes, we do. But where we do want to put it is right here. So what we want to do then now is to add that row using the short code. So what we'll do is we could do it two ways. We could put it directly in here or we could duplicate this and have it in its own row. And that's the way I prefer to do it for this example. So let's go in the wrench. Get rid of that text, and now we're going to enter the Diva Builder short code. So it's the left square bracket, FL underscore builder, that's for fast line, underscore builder, underscore insert, underscore layout, space slug, which is the name that you gave your saved row equals quotes to oops to dash 
colas. I do believe we call it quotes brackets or right square bracket and save. And there you go. Done. Publish changes. And we can go look on the front and see how that looks. And now there's our two callouts uh, in the same column as our header and our text module. And that's really about it. Now you can play around, like I said, with the margins, padding. You can, uh, maybe you want to tighten it up by actually putting it in here instead of its own row. Let's go do that just to show you quickly. Launch page builder. Uh, we'll go here and edit this. We don't have to type it again. Save. Delete that. Yes. Come over here. Edit. Uh, let's do a shift return. So it tightens it up. Paste it. And save. And done. Publish changes. There you go. Tighten it up a little bit. Look in the front. Let's go see. And there you see. Yep. And that is how you can end up with uh, columns within columns uh, while waiting for the uh, fantastic crew of Beaver Builder uh, to implement this in some manner uh, directly within the plugin. But I think you get the idea. So uh, thanks for watching, and we'll see you later.